Hallo, here today from Faye's Parallel Stories and I thought I'd wrap up the books I read in November and December thus far. I've got six books and that fits quite nicely into a video. Also I tend to cram more books at the end of the year so I have a bit more like 10 days or so to, to cram um, and I thought it'd be good to do a cut here. Um, so first book I read in November, I did a review on The Day of the Triffids by John Wyndham. This I really, really enjoyed. It's a sort of classic post-apocalyptic story in which um, most of the people in the world, although we don't really know it's set in London, uh, lose their eyesight after a meteor shower, after watching a meteor shower, a main character has still got his eyesight and leads through the story um, and the chaos that ensues gives the upper hand to the sort of sentient flesh-eating plants, the triffids, um, that sort of roam around in the countryside. Um, it was great, uh, I thought. Um, still really fun, not too dated, albeit some of the sort of gender questions were quite hilarious, read from a more sort of modern point of view, but it didn't bug me and I'd really recommend it to uh, someone who wants to try a, a, a sort of post apocalyptic blah, 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 blah. Mm, yeah, I recommend it to someone who feels like reading a sort of dystopian post apocalyptic book that they don't have to feel too cringy about reading. Um, and then I chose to go with something still super fast paced and read The Mermaid Singing by Val McDermott. This is the first in her Tony Hill series and it's the first ever Val McDermott I read. Um, th so this follows Tony Hill's sort of beginning involvement with the police in uh, solving crimes. He's a forensic psychologist and... Um, yeah, he's called in to write a psychological profile on a serial killer who um, is really obsessed with torture methods. And we know this because in between chapters there are almost like logbooks of him dealing with his victims. It's at times really quite rough to read, like difficult to read um, because it's so explicit in its descriptions of the, the killings and the torturing. Um, still, it really pulled me in. Um, I'm quite excited to continue reading Val McDermott books just because she's such a bigger in the crime genre and I'm relatively new to crime fiction. I didn't, I haven't really read much and I didn't used to enjoy it as a teenager at least. Um, and now I just sort of enjoy the fast pacedness of it. Um, and I like them when they're, um, yeah, especially gruesome. Um, so I, I think this is great read, even though I feel like most people probably know of Val McDermott, at least. Uh, I'd recommend this one if you can stomach something quite horrible. <laughs> um, and then I finished reading The History of Love by Nicole Krauss, which I mentioned in my like end of the year tag, hoping that this would be uh, one of my faves. I'm not sure about that. It follows um, a 14-year-old teenage girl and a sort of aging, I don't know, I don't know, actually know if his name, uh, I don't actually know if his age is mentioned, sort of aging 70-ish, very unhappy guy who uh, came to the United States from Poland, I believe. Yeah, um, and, and that's also the problem. Like, I'm already starting to get a bit unsure about the details. Their stories interweave. At the center of it is a book that was written and has, has changed the lives involved in this story. It's really nicely written, and that really pulled me in, and in the beginning made me really think that I'd love it. I did like it, although towards the end I started getting quite confused. Like, I feel a bit dumb admitting this, but I started getting a bit confused who was who and which name referred to who, and that did sort of leave me feeling a bit lost as soon as I finished the last page. Um, so if anyone had a sort of more intellectual, <laughs> more understanding experience with this, let me know, like explain a few details to me. Um, I don't know if my very straightforward interpretation of it is actually accurate. Um, it's very sort of sweet in the sound of the writing and uh, I think the cover and, and the name does also give that away, but it's not 
mm, it's not sickly, like it's not sort of women's fiction, whatever that means, but like it's not chiclety at all. Um, and no, I did enjoy it, but I didn't love it as much as I thought I would. Then um, for my uh, real life book club that I'm in, we read The Thing Around Your Neck by, yeah, Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. I'm not sure, I'll just say that quickly and hope people forgive me if I pronounce that incorrectly. This is a collection of short stories that all somehow deal with being torn between um, your Nigerian identity and your American identity or the different cultures, um, families that are uh, multicultural, uh, Nigerian people wanting to leave for a better life in America. Um, all these sort of uh, questions are at the centre of these short stories. It's really hard hitting at time, but I was surprised that it was far more accessible than I thought it would be. It's not really the kind of book I would have picked up for myself um, because I was I was afraid that it would either be far too um, political and expect prior knowledge by the reader about sort of African politics and history, um, or that because it was short stories and it's it's not super thick either, that it would really just scratch on the surface and leave me really unsatisfied. But neither of that those things happened. Um, you can read it without being super knowledgeable about what's going on in Nigeria at the moment. Um, although after reading this, you might be more interested to find out more. Um, and I think she just writes really well as well. Um, I have not read Amrukana, which is probably her most um, famous uh, book. Um, but yeah, I'm less intimidated now that I've read this to pick it up. Um, uh, it was a far quicker read than I thought it would be. Um, although, again, you... <sighs> Some of these stories are really gut-wrenching and emotional. So be warned, one of the... Um, girls in my book club said that she was really battling tears, especially in one of the stories, which I think is called The American Embassy, something like that, um, which, yeah, was a really great one. So I, I highly recommend for anyone, really. Um, we all enjoyed it in our book club in our way. And then I read two more books on my Kindle and chose to go the exact opposite way uh, after reading hard-hitting, emotional, political controversy, I read How to Find Love in a Bookshop. <laughs> um, this by, I wrote down her name, what she called, Veron Veronica Henry. I only read because it had like a bookshop in the title and it's a super fairly light uh, chick lit. I read it uh, on train trip to and fro uh, to Berlin and it... <sighs> Yeah, the story's so easy, so simple. It's about 30-something-year-old Amelia who returns to her hometown, small town, somewhere in Oxfordshire, to save the bookshop that her deceased father has left behind. Um, this, of course, is uh, threatening to become bankrupt, because, of course, and with the help of some unexpected friends and lovely people in this small town, um she might succeed and yeah all the characters the characters were really nice and I did appreciate that it's not I mean yes it is your typical chiclet but I also read it for that like everyone everyone is the way you expect them to be it's not difficult battling out the gray zones because it's very clear where where there's black and where there's white um but it was still super fun and the bookshop setting was nice it's really non-judgmental which I like. Sometimes when I read these super frilly fluffy books, I get really annoyed that there's this undercurrent of um, judging people's lifestyles and that's not the case here. But everything does wrap up in a very lovely bow um, and if you're looking for something to just make you feel light and warm and not ponder all the crap, then that might be for you. I don't know. And it's also a quick read, so that helps. Um, I've got fluff in my mouth. That's not nice. And then, for a little bit more uh, substance, I guess, 
I read one non-fiction book on my Kindle as well um, called, uh, yeah, I always don't, I forget the title, Forensics, What Bugs, Burns, Prints, DNA and More Tell Us About Crime, which is also by Val McDermott, you remember the crime novel I read, um, now I read a non-fiction book by hers. And this was super cool and I was really surprised that even though it's non-fiction about forensics and the different sort of disciplines involved in forensics and quite sciencey at times, it's it was really easy to get into. Um, she puts in loads of true crime examples, which are fascinating. Um, and yeah, there's there's especially one chapter that I actually thought was the most interesting on um, entomology, which was a new word to me, science of insects. Um, and yeah, that might not be something for that everyone will stomach reading all the details on how sort of insects can help us uh, find the, the, the origin, the, the time lapse involved in a crime. Um, but yeah, I thought it was super cool. I, I, I thought it was great. Um, yeah, I don't really know who I'd recommend it to, but anyone who sort of is interested in a bit of a morbid topic, I thought it was really excellent and not stuffy at all which sometimes can be the case with non-fiction books and not <laughs> too long that sounds weird but sometimes I feel like when non-fiction books are too limited on one topic um I feel like I could also just read an essay on it and then the chapters keep on repeating themselves but this is really not the case here because she has chapter for chapter different discipline um so it doesn't get too repetitive, even though she does sometimes uh, refer to a certain crime, crime case that she did already mention in the beginning. Um, it's it's really immersive. It's uh, yeah, I was really, really positively surprised. Um, and it really helped me push on with reading because what I am currently reading really didn't do that for me. The Child in Time by Ian McEwan. I am sort of 50 measly pages in and I always claim that Ian McEwan is my favourite author and I do like his language but this is so difficult to get into. This is like one of his earlier ones I think. I don't even, I don't even know. I thought it sounded really promising. Yeah, 1987. Um, the, the blurb on the back says that it's about a guy who loses his young daughter, um, sort of four or five year old daughter in the supermarket. She just disappears and obviously his life from then on just super sucks. Um, and I thought it would be good, but yeah, I'm going to force myself to read more because 50 pages in an Ian McEwan novel doesn't really mean too much, but, oh, don't know. Has anyone read this? Can anyone promise me this will get really good? I don't know. I hope it will. Um, so that's not doing great for my reading lust that I usually have at the end of December. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll do a little think. I'm going to be traveling for Christmas and New Year's. Um, so hopefully we'll get a lot of reading in there and I'm trying to come up with a list of options on my Kindle. Um, so yeah, if anyone has like some really quick read suggestions that I could maybe still get my Goodreads goal with, then yeah, don't be shy. Let me know. Um, and I'll talk to you very soon. Bye-bye.